CC Pixel Poly is found under the simulation category, and I'll go ahead and apply that to my logo. And what this effect does is shatters your layer. As I play through this, you can see it happening, and we have a handful of controls to modify how that shatter actually looks. It's far less complicated than the actual shatter effect, but you don't always need a lot of controls to create what you're after. So let's take a look at these controls. First of all, we have force, and this is just how strongly the explosion is going to be for all these individual little pieces. So if I increase this to say 300, then all those shards are gonna fly out a lot further. And you can see that this is being constrained to the transform bounds of my layer. So I'm gonna pre-compose that. Control Shift C or Command Shift C on a Mac, and I'll just name this logo. And then I'll go into that pre-comp, go to my composition settings, and change this to be the same size as my other comp, which is 1920 by 1080. Now that effect will expand all the way to the edges of my comp and I'll see the whole thing. Next up is gravity. If I turn that up, then we're going to have pieces falling to the ground more quickly. So I'll play that and six is pretty strong, so it pretty much just falls to the ground. But if I change that to say two instead of one, they'll fall more quickly. And generally, I think that the initial gravity, the default setting on most of these effects that have gravity aren't nearly strong enough. So try to think about how quickly something falls to the ground, especially if it's made up of glass, it's gonna be faster than this. So I'm gonna put that up to maybe three and I'll call that good for the gravity. I'll just go to a frame where I can see that explosion and then increase the force so that it goes further out in the comp and then falls to the ground more quickly. All right, next up is spinning, and this is basically the randomness for all the individual pieces. If I were to set this down to zero, they're not going to rotate at all. They'll just shoot out and fall to the ground. Or if I crank this up to say five or six, then we're gonna get a lot of spinning as those shards fly out. The next property is force center, and this is a point control right in the center of the layer. As I move this around, you can see that it kind of controls where this shatter is happening from. There's no way to control how much of your image is shattering. It will always shatter everything at once, but this will at least put the force at a specific point so that all the shards fly off in a direction relative to that point. So if I put it down in the bottom right, they're going to shoot up into the left, or if I put it on the left side, they're gonna shoot towards the right. We have a direction randomness control, which does just what you'd think. If I turn that all the way down to zero, then they're all going to be very uniformly moving off in the same direction. If I crank that all the way up to 100, then they're all going to have very different directions as they all shatter out. Put that down to around 25%. We have speed randomness, which again, just adds another variable for randomizing that shatter look. And then grid spacing, this one's pretty important because if you turn the grid spacing down, you're going to get much finer shards and you won't see those polygons quite as much. So it looks a lot more like it's bursting into maybe sand or just much finer particles. Or I could crank that up and we'll have really big shards. I'm gonna turn that grid spacing down a bit so we can see those pieces a little bit more clearly. And then take a look at the object. This is where we can actually control the shape of the particles. So I'm going to add a solid composite effect before pixel poly which will just put a solid background behind my logo. And I'll just make it a mid gray. Now we'll be able to see the entire image and all of these shards will be filled. So you can clearly see that these are polygons and they're textured with the layers pixels. So where my logo is has those pixels on it to generate that texture. You know what, to make this a little easier to see, I'm actually gonna turn that gravity back down to zero and reset that force back down to 100 so that it's not quite so explosive. And now you can see that that texture is really being applied to each one of these polygons. If I change this from textured polygon to just polygon, it very slightly changes. What's happening now is that the texture is no longer being directly applied to these polygons. Instead, each polygon is sampling the average color underneath it and filling it with that solid color. So actually, if I were to add, say, a gradient ramp, turn off CC Pixel Poly for a second, and add a CC Composite effect to bring my logo back on top of that gradient, now we have a lot more variance in the texture and turn that CC pixel poly back on. With that textured polygon enabled, we can see the gradient actually moving through each one of these particles. With polygon selected, it again just samples the average color underneath that polygon and fills it with that color. We have two other particle types, square, which changes the shape and again, it just samples the average color and then textured square, which keeps the original pixels from the layers underneath intact. All right, I'm gonna get rid of these other effects that I added. And the last property is start time, and this is measured in seconds. So what this is basically is a delay for the shatter. So if I were to set this to one second, then nothing is going to happen until one second, and then it will shatter. So this is useful for if you need to time this shattering to a specific point in your timeline, 
It'll allow you to precisely place that explosion point wherever you want it to be. And that's everything you need to know about CC Pixel Poly. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.